Okay, so my author, author was Antoine uh, Francois Prevost. Um, he was born April 1st, uh, 1697, um, and he died November 25th, 1763. He studied at the Jesuit uh, School of Hesden in France and became a novice of their order in 1713. Um, he went on and joined the French army in 1716, getting a commission a few years later. Uh, after his army service, he was taken in by the Benedictines of St. Mar. Um, he took his priest's orders at the Abbey of St. Grimer de Flay uh, in 1726. Um, in 1728, he was sent to the Abbey of uh, St. Germain de Pre in Paris where he contributed to the um, Galea Christiana. Uh, this is a historiographic documentation of all the Catholic dioceses and abbeys of France, as well as their occupants. Um, he got kind of restless <laughs> at this abbey, and um, he sent a request to the Pope for a transfer, but he left the Abbey before he actually got permission in 1728. And um, he quickly learned that his superiors had gotten basically a letter for his arrest um, signed by the King. So he fled to England. Um, while living in London, he acquired a vast knowledge of English history and literature. Um, which had its influence in his writings. In 1729, he left England for the Netherlands where he continued writing. Um, and in 1733, he left the Netherlands and returned back to London where he got a job editing a weekly gazette, which he continued producing until 1740. Um, after uh, making up and reconciling with the with the Benedictines. Um, he returned to France and continued living and writing at the at the Chantilly until his sudden death in 16 or in 1763. Um, he died from a ruptured aneurysm while he was out walking in the woods near the um, abbey. Um, the work that I'm going to talk about by him is Manon Lescaut. Uh, it is the final volume of Memoirs and Adventures of a Man of Quality. Um, the story follows, um, De Gros and his lover Manon in France and Louisiana. Uh, the story is set in the 18th century, and it was incredibly controversial for its time, um, which led to it being banned in France immediately upon its publication uh, in 1731. Um, however, the publication still was incredibly popular, um, and pirated copies were widely produced and distributed. Um, the story was later adopted into various ballets, films, operas, musicals, the most recent, recent of which was a musical written in 2015. Um, quick summary of the work itself. Um, De Gros, De Gros is a 17 year old from a noble family studying philosophy. And he runs away with Manon uh, while she is on her way to a convent. Um, this brings a very large amount of disappointment from his father, and he ends up forfeiting his familial wealth to um, pursue this relationship. Uh, the young couple end up living in Paris, and he struggles to meet 
Manon's taste for the upper class luxury that she's used to. Um, so he results to borrowing money from his friend uh, Tyberg. I know I said that wrong. <laughs> um, and he also uh, cheats at gambling games. Um, he ends up losing his wealth several times in the story um, by thievery, which I personally think is ironic because he made some of that wealth by thievery, technically, by cheating gambling, um, and also by a house fire. These occurrences end up leading Manon to leave him for a wealthier man because she can't stand the thought of being poor. Um, she ends up being deported to New Orleans uh, for prostitution, um, and he follows her there, and they end up living under the guise of them being a married couple, even though they're not. And when he comes out and says, hey, we're not actually married, but we want to be, to the governor, um, the governor's nephew uh, starts pursuing Manon, um, hoping to get her hand in marriage before they actually get married. Um, out of fear of her leaving him yet again for someone wealthier, um, he challenges the governor's nephew to a duel in which he knocks the poor kid out and thinking that he killed him, um, he grabs Manon and they flee into the wilderness, um, hoping to come across a English colony. Um, but she dies the very next morning and after he buries her, um, he fought, he, he goes back to France, um, with Tyberg. My personal favorite character, um, was Tyberg simply because he tried his best to be a good friend and to help him out. But in my eyes, grew was a little bit possessive and manipulative because he did things like challenge a dude to a duel instead of actually fighting for her right like talking to her and like making her actually love him but that is kind of to be expected or normal for the time I guess um and Manon honestly irritated me because of how materialistic and vain she was in the story. But um, I do believe that her portrayal was kind of a pick at the nobility of the time, saying, you guys could be doing better. Like, there's more to life than just the materialistic things. Um, I do think that this book specifically did have a fairly significant impact on the world uh, because there are still adaptations of the story being made even 300 years later, just about. Um, I do think that this was taking more of a literary stand um, of pointing fingers and kind of poking at the flaws of society at the time, um, especially views on prostitution and the life and power that the nobilities hold um, at that time, kind of calling them out to say, hey, you guys could be doing so much more and you guys have all this money and you're not using it in the way that you could to do better things and to live a better life, um, kind of saying, I guess, that, like, pursue love over money is how I took it. Um, this is something that is still relevant even today, um, and it, it it's always amazed me how um, authors like Prevost are able to create these works that are still like super important in like societal discussion 
hundreds of years later. Um, So these are pictures from one of the more recent adaptations um, into an opera. And I just, I, I love opera <laughs> outfits. They're great. Um, this is when Manon dies. <laughs> but yeah, thank you for listening to my presentation. Um, hope everybody has a decent rest of their summer. Um, bye.